and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Applied Electromagnetics for Engineers. In this module, we will calculate inductance, one of the important circuit parameter for a couple of cases. While doing so, we will also be calculating the magnetic fields for them. So, let us begin by first understanding what is inductance. You have to understand that inductance is a concept associated with magnetic flux that links to a particular conductor. This is one way of defining inductance. Another way of defining inductance is to actually calculate what is the amount of magnetic energy stored in a group of conductors or in a conductor and then based on that define inductance. We will not take that magnetic energy route because it is little more complicated and does not really serve our purpose. What we do instead is that we define inductance in terms of the flux linkage associated with a particular circuit. You notice that I am keeping the word links as a very vague word because I do not want to specify mathematically or rigorously because it is actually very difficult to do so, but most of the times it should not cause us confusion because intuition tells us what is this flux linkage and how to define that flux linkage, how much flux linkage, the amount of flux linkage to a particular conductor is usually guided by the induction. Okay. Sometimes it so happens that a particular conductor might have more than uh, you know, one flux linkage associated with it or sometimes you might have flux linkage coming from one source link n 1 times, another source linking n 2 times, another source linking n 3 times to a given inductor. So, we say that if we consider an you know if we consider a conductor, we say that one single flux linkage exists, okay. one single flux linkage exists when a single flux line. So, what is flux? Flux is the magnetic flux density lines that we are talking about, the so called B lines you know for a simple magnet you have seen those flux lines right. So, N and S poles if you see these are all the field lines or the flux lines that you can think of. So, we are talking about how much of this flux links to a particular conductor. Okay. So, a single flux linkage is said to exist in a particular conductor when a single flux line links as I said this word is little vague at this point, but I will soon clarify that one. So, when this single flux line links to the conductor. As I said sometimes you might have a flux which we will denote this as phi. So, you might have a certain circuit being linked with a flux phi 1 and it might link a times n 1, flux phi 2 might link the same circuit n 2 times and so on. So, you can actually think of the total flux linkage okay, and this total flux linkage is usually measured or it is measured in Weber's okay. and this total flux linkage we denote it by this capital lambda it will be given by summation over n i phi i okay, over all possible values of i. The assumption that we have made here when we wrote n 1 phi 1 plus n 2 phi 2 seems to be that all of these n i's are integer. Okay. It need not be so. In fact, you might have a flux linking not completely to a circuit, but only partially. Okay. This concept of partial flux linkage is very important and it will come up when we calculate the inductance of you know a coaxial cable for example. Therefore, one has to generalize and allow for fractional flux linkages. Therefore, one should not assume that these n i numbers are always going to be some whole numbers you know 10, 5, 7, 8 and so on. You might also have about 8.3253 kind of a number for these n i's. Okay. Whenever this type of a fractional flux exists, then the total flux is usually defined as the integral over the differential amount of flux that gets linked to a particular circuit. However, to a given circuit, the amount of magnetic flux linking will be given by the integral, the open surface integral of the magnetic flux density. Correct. This comes up because you know you have the total integral of d dot ds where d was the electric flux density. When you integrate this one over an open surface, okay, you would obtain whatever the charge that was present okay, or the flux lines that was crossing that particular surface. When you close it, you would find the source of that d lines as the charges. 
but if you keep this open, so if this is the open surface that I am looking at and if the D fields are going around or crossing this particular surface, then the amount of flux crossing this hatched surface area will be obtained by the open surface integral of D. In a manner that is very similar to that, you might think of this as B lines and this as a cross section or the open surface over which I am actually trying to integrate. So, if I denote the area integration by subscripting this integral sign with A, this would be the amount of flux that would be linked. Okay. Of course, this is the flux that is linked, actually B dot ds is the flux that is linked partially, d phi is not, the correct thing would be to actually say that the partial flux linkage is B dot ds, where we are assuming that B is kind of constant over that particular surface. So, pushing this back into the expression for the total flux linkage, lambda will be equal to integral of n B dot ds. Okay. This integral still makes sense because B dot ds is the differential amount of flux linkage. Of course, if you integrate over the complete area, you will get the total flux that is linking that particular cross section. Okay. So, uh, since I am only interested in the differential amount of the flux that is linked or the infinitesimal flux linkage, I write this as B dot ds. Okay. In a linear medium, the magnetic flux density is proportional to current. We have seen that for example, in the case of a long infinitely long wire, the magnetic flux density B you know will be given by uh, along the phi direction, we have placed the wire along the z direction let us say. So, this would be given by mu i, if the wire is carrying a current of i, then this would be given by mu i by 2 pi r, where r is the radial distance from the wire at which we are evaluating this magnetic flux or magnetic flux density. Okay. So, in a linear medium, B is function of i, how much current is being carried by that particular current and it is also directly proportional to this i. If I evaluate B at some reference current i0, okay, if I evaluate this B at some reference current, then I obtain some magnetic flux density which we will denote it as B of i0. If I divide this one by i0 which is the reference current, this should then be equal to whatever the flux that I calculate with the actual current I that is propagating or being carried by the wire divided by the current in the wire. Okay. For a linear medium this of course, you know holds true because this right hand side quantity simply becomes a constant independent of I. Right. So, right hand side of this equation is a constant independent of I. Now, I can substitute therefore, what is the magnetic flux density when the wire or the conductor is carrying a current of I and that would be equal to I by I naught B of I 0 and I substitute this into the expression for the flux linkage. So, I obtain N B I 0 dot D S divided by I 0 and there is also another I along with this. Okay. Since I is not dependent on what surface area we are evaluating, so I can push this I outside of this integral. Okay. So, I obtain I integral of n B I 0 which is the magnetic flux density given a reference current I naught dot d s which will tell you the amount of the differential magnetic flux that is crossing per surface area and this quantity I can now or rather I can now call this entire right hand side quantity. Okay. Once I go through the complete area A, I can call this right hand side quantity by some symbol called L and this L is now defined as inductance associated with that particular conductor. Okay. So, this is defined as inductance. So, in simple words, okay, inductance is defined as what is the total flux that is linking to a particular conductor divided by what is the current that is being carried by the conductor. Okay. And this equation is Im important. So, if you remember this, then you can actually solve and calculate inductances. As an example, we will consider or before we consider the example, I should point out what do we mean by flux linkage. Okay. Now, imagine that I have a wire. Okay. So, I have this wire which I have wound it up in the form of a coil. So, this is the wire which is carrying some current I okay. and of course, the same current is returning back from this. Now, you imagine that I actually have a metal ring. Okay. What I do with that metal ring is I take the metal ring okay, and then pass it through, you know, it is an imaginary 
metal ring of course ok. So, I pass this metal ring through this coil ok such that the coil actually cuts this particular region ok. So, the coil is essentially cutting this region of course, it is not cutting in the real sense it is only cutting in the imaginary sense ok. So, I can show you by an example suppose this is the wire that is you know carrying a current. So, let us the current be going around this particular direction. Now, you imagine that my hand you know this is making a symbol ok this is the row uh, this is the uh, loop that is having. So, if I now simply go through this loop and then link to this wire ok you can imagine that this part of the wire is actually coming back ok. So, this part of the wire is coming back but my thumb and the index fingers are not crossing that other path ok. So, there is this return path is there, but my loop which is made by these fingers are not crossing that one. So, this we say has a single flux linkage ok. So, this we say has a single flux linkage. So, here if you calculate what is the amount of flux linkage or if you say what is the number of flux linkages, the number of flux linkages is 1. Now, we consider a slightly different example this time it will be little complicated ok. So, we do not just consider the current carrying wire, but we actually wind it up in the form of a coil ok. So, we wind it up in the form of a coil. So, let me also draw the other part of this So, the current I is entering here and the same current I will be coming back to the coil ok. Now, let me show you one line ok and you can guess what would be the amount of flux linkages that happens to this particular line ok. So, let me go through this line ok. So, this is the line that in green which I have written you know I have marked and I know that wherever I show that you know it is the line is not continuous it means that the corresponding wire or the loop is actually passing through this this imaginary loop is passing through this or cutting through that one. So, how many cuts we have now here we have a total of 3 cuts correct. So, this is an example where we have 3 flux linkages ok. You have to imagine that there is a sheet that you can think of and you can imagine that you know uh, you can take a metal wire or something and then just that wire passes through these planes. This is one plane that I have shown with the hatched area, this is another plane that I have shown in the hatched area and there is one more cut coming through this one because we can imagine that this itself is one plane and we are cutting this plane exactly once. So, the total number of cuts that we have made or the flux lines cutting this coil is about 3 times and therefore, this is a 3 flux linkage example. On the same graph I would like to show you a different kind of a cut ok. This time let me show you a cut where we begin with this flux line ok and then we go through here, go through here ok or rather we go all the way over here and then we come to this and then we come back over here. So, let us see how many cuts we actually made ok. So, here we made 1, 2 and 3 ok. So, we only have made 3. So, let me actually erase this line and then cut it in a slightly different way ok. So, let me cut at this point as well. So, how many times I am actually cutting this coil? I am cutting this coil 4 times. So, here is one time, this is the second time. So, this was the first time, second time, third time and a fourth time. So, the number of flux linkage here is actually 4 ok. I will show you one last example, so that it becomes clear to you. Suppose, this is the flux line that is coming in ok and then this comes all the way here and cuts only this particular surface ok. So, this particular flux line that is coming in comes all the way over here and then cuts through this particular coil. So, 1, 2 and 3. So, maybe this is the third coil from the top ok. How many flux linkages do I have now? I have about 2 flux linkages. If I remove this second line ok and instead assume that the cut that I am going to make will actually pass through this coil ok. So, it passes through this coil then how many cuts do I have? This time I have about 2 flux linkages ok. So, as I said the word links is little vague 
okay you are not most of the time interested in calculating individually these flux lines okay what you will be interested is to calculate what is the average flux linkage in this case how many lines were there there were three lines and each line cut or linked to that particular coil in a different amount of time so the first one was at 4 second one was 3 the third one was 2 so 4 plus 3 is 7 7 plus 2 is 9 9 by 3 on an average we have three flux linkages to this particular coil okay of course these flux lines have to come from a certain magnet or some kind of a magnetic field around this this magnetic field if it is lying externally or supplied externally to the coil then this associates to the external inductance however we know that if there is a current flowing through the coil it itself will generate a magnetic field right so if that magnetic field links then you have an internal flux linkages okay so let us look at two examples the first example that we are going to look at is what is called as a toroid toroids are very important they are used widely especially in PCBs where you require a good amount of inductance for chokes and other cases. So, toroids are a very important uh, way of obtaining inductances. Okay. And what does a toroid consist of? Well, a toroid is simply a magnetic material or a long solenoid okay, that has been completely wound in the form of a circle and then you have a wire that goes through this. Okay. So, you have a wire that is linked let me just show it with a way like that okay so the current i will be entering this toroid and or the wires and then the current same current will be coming back okay and in while it encircles here each time you can simplify this movement by assuming that there is actually a closed loop okay and there is one more closed loop at this point and in fact there are about n such closed loops through which this is linking the solenoid so or, or through these loops are actually going into the solenoid so the simpler version is to imagine that there are loops instead of this kind of a spiral kind of a winding okay this assumption is true as long as the number of windings n will be very large so n is large and the windings are very tight okay also if i call the radius of this solenoid as r so this is the radius so at this point is the radius please note that one this is from the origin to the point where i have indicated here is the radius and the coil itself is assumed to have a certain amount of thickness okay the solenoid is assumed to have a certain amount of thickness which we will denote by d okay now how do i find the field Okay, the first step would be to find the field magnetic field and from the magnetic field I will then be able to find out what is the amount of flux because amount of magnetic flux linkage and from that I will be able to calculate the inductance. So, how do I calculate the field of this toroid? Well, we have seen in the last two modules that whenever there is a current flow in a given path the magnetic field will tend to encircle that. So, if there is a wire magnetic field is circling here and if the current itself is going through the circles in this way to the circle that is shown in this green color the magnetic field has to come out as perpendicular to this so it has to come out perpendicular here it has to come out perpendicular here perpendicular and in fact what you will see is that the magnetic field is going to form you know circles along the phi direction so if i consider this as a phi direction this would be the circle that i am going to obtain we will also make couple of additional assumptions saying that r is much larger than d so we are going to neglect the thickness of the toroid material and we because of this if i want to find the magnetic field inside in this between these regions you know that value or that particular radial distance let us denote it as some value of small r in our approximation that r is much larger than d r is approximately equal to small r okay of course, if I consider a particular radius r such that it would be in this region. So, in this hatched regions if I consider the radius r to lie okay, so this is the radius r then the magnetic field or the magnetic flux density integrated around that particular or at a constant radius r will be given by b phi because that is the direction in which your magnetic field is. So, this b phi divided by mu integrated over the corresponding loop here which is r d phi that must be equal to the total current that is being enclosed and the total current enclosed is n times i because through each green loop 
you will have one current coming out or rather the each B field encircles one current in this loop and there are n such loops therefore, the total current enclosed will be equal to n into i from which you can calculate what is the value of the magnetic field at a given radial distance r and this would be given by mu n i divided by 2 pi r ok as long as r is in this hatched area ok. So, we are calculating the magnetic field and the magnetic field is confined into this thickness ok. So, the magnetic field does not come out of the toroid because it cannot come out of the toroid in a tightly wound toroid the magnetic field outside will have to be equal to 0. So, this is how the magnetic flux would be and I want to find out how much of magnetic flux is linking this particular current loops ok. So, imagine that I know I have I am looking at this particular uh, circle although I am you know it is a little exaggerated showing that these uh, wires have come out in actuality the wires are only coming or tightly wound on the thickness itself right and the magnetic field is now crossing this perpendicular to this surface area and what is the surface area of that one that is actually the surface area of a circle that you would draw on the toroid outside which has a radius of d by 2. Therefore, the surface area of this one through which the magnetic field will be coming out and perpendicular to that one and therefore, corresponds to the total flux associated with that one that surface area is pi d square divided by 4 ok. So, I can multiply the amount of or the I can find out what is the total magnetic flux the total magnetic flux will be n into b phi into pi d square by 4 and in this expression I will replace this small r by the capital R because that is what the assumption that we have made the thickness of this toroid is actually very small. Therefore, I can replace this small r by capital R and then I can write the total flux linkage as n you know you remember this the total flux linkage will be given by n into b phi into pi d square by 4. So, we, we can write it here itself b phi is given by mu n i divided by 2 pi capital R after making this approximation times pi d square by 4. So, clearly pi cancels out n increases by n square. So, the total flux linkage that you are going to get will be mu n square i d square divided by 8 times r ok and the inductance L is given by lambda divided by i which in this case becomes mu n square d square divided by 8 r. So, this is the inductance of a toroid coil. As the next example we will consider the coaxial cable ok. You remember from the previous module that a coaxial cable had an inner conductor of A and an outer conductor of thickness C minus B because we assume that the outer conductor well you know you had a two concentric circles one of radius p and the other one of radius c. So, this is one conductor which actually carries the return current of minus i this is the forward conductor which carries a forward current of i or the inner conductor which carries a current i ok. What is the inductance of this cable you have to remember or recall what is the field that we actually calculated ok. And once we know the magnetic fields then we will have to find a particular surface through which we will have to calculate the flux linkage. In this example you will see that the, con the flux linkage will not be complete in at least two sections of the coaxial cable ok. Flux linkage will be complete only in one section in the other two sections would not be complete ok. First let us write down what is the fields that we calculated ok. For this one we calculated fields in three different regions. The first region when r was less than a was the inner conductor case where the magnetic field b is given by mu i r divided by 2 pi a square and for the region where you were in between the inner and the outer conductor the magnetic field b was given by mu i by 2 pi r and for the region between b and c that is in the outer conductor region the magnetic field was given by 2 pi r b divided by mu. So, this 2 pi r into h b by mu is actually h correct this would be equal to the current i minus i into r square minus b square divided by c square minus b square ok. So, we saw this yesterday and from which of course, you can find out what would be the magnetic field b. Now, notice something over here 
in this region the magnetic flux okay depends on the value of r at which we are calculating the magnetic flux therefore the corresponding flux linkage well we have to first tell you where the surface that you are going to look at the surface for calculating the amount of flux linkage can be considered to be by looking at the coaxial cable longitudinal cross sections so you, this is the longitudinal cross section this is a this is b and this one is c right so we have to first find a surface through which each flux line cuts only once and because the magnetic field is circulating right so this is how the magnetic field is circulating right so the surface must be chosen in such a way that the magnetic field actually comes out of it so if i have this wire then the magnetic field has because it is circulating it is coming out in this way so my surface has to be kept here so that this four lines which i am showing are the magnetic field lines or the flux lines that are coming out so this is the direction of the inner conductor this is the magnetic flux and this surface if i now pick will have a uh, magnetic flux line coming out so the surface that i am going to pick will be in the constant phi plane because b will be in the phi plane and therefore that would be perpendicular to the phi plane so if i draw that constant surface let me take that surface as all the way from a r equal to 0 to this one and the length of this surface element will be denoted by l and as you will later see we are not interested in the inductance itself but we are interested in the inductance per unit length okay so this is the surface that we are going to consider and if you consider this surface as long as you are in the inner conductor you see in the inner conductor the magnetic flux lines would actually be complete in this way so the magnetic field lines at a given r would be circling the current through this one right so if i consider this small value of r it would be circling through here but only this portion is getting linked right so it's only one portion or the fractional portion that actually gets linked to the surface that we have drawn so because of that the fraction through which the flux links is given by r square divided by a square if you are not convinced with this you can just think of how much current is actually carried by this particular hatched surface area the green surface area it will not carry the complete current it will only carry a current which is a fraction of the total current carried by the conductor the inner conductor has a current density of i by pi a square and only a fraction that density times pi r square is being carried by this loop and therefore that's only a fraction of the conductor that the magnetic flux links on the other hand if you go outside the magnetic flux line links completely okay it encloses the complete current so in the outside region the fraction n will be equal to 1 because the current density is i by pi a square and the fraction that is carried by any r outside of this one will not be you know sorry the induct the density might be i by pi a square but once you are outside this loop right outside the inner conductor then the entire flux gets linked so essentially in the region outside the inner conductor or in between the inner and the outer conductors the fraction will be n equal to 1 and by looking at this equation you can imagine what would be the fraction that would be carried in the outer conducting region and that would be equal to 1 minus r square minus b square divided by c square minus b square so these values of r square by a square and 1 and 1 minus r square minus b square by c minus b square are the partial fractions that are linking to this inner conductor and the outer conductor in this way now to obtain the total flux linkage i simply have to integrate over the three regions actually i should have shown you that there are three uh, surface regions over here one will go from 0 to a the other one will go from 0 to b the other one will go from or rather the other one will go from a to b the other one will go from b to c so there are three regions of integration depending on the value of r and if you carry out those integrations with the appropriate value of the magnetic fields inside for example for the inner conductor you are there from 0 to a and mu i r by 2 pi a square r square divided by a square l dr i have actually taken the liberty of multiplying this by l so this would be the contribution from the first integral or or the inner integral or the inner conductor and for the region between the conductors you will have to integrate from a to b the magnetic flux density is mu i by 2 pi r there 
L times dr, the fraction does not enter. The fraction in this case was r square by a square for the inner conductor, whereas for the outer conductor it does not. So, this is what you get, this is for the in between region and for the outer conductor you are going from B to C and you will have to write down the corresponding magnetic field as well as the fraction through which this is linking. Both I have indicated in the previous slide, so I will ask you to put that one in and when you carry out the integration and once you obtain the integration this will all be proportional to the current i and if you divide this flux linkage by i into l what you obtain is lambda over i into l but lambda over i is the inductance l divided by l will give you the inductance per unit length okay so inductance per unit length let us denote it as some l prime which is the quantity that we were very interested in the case of uh, transmission lines when we were discussing and this l prime will be equal to mu by 8 pi plus mu by 2 pi log of b by a plus reasonably complicated term you can actually sit and do the integration and then show that this is correct okay so it is given by this value this is very important practically therefore i am actually writing this entire thing okay minus c square by c square minus b square plus 1 by 4 c square plus b square divided by c square minus b square times Henry per meter. So, it might look complicated, but this actually has three contributions. Okay. One is what is called as the internal contribution and this internal contribution will be independent of frequency. Okay. We have calculated inductance only for the case of DC frequencies, but this calculation when you extend it for the AC frequencies or for higher frequencies, you will see that the other terms will actually start to disappear. However, this term mu by 8 pi being completely independent of the frequency will always survive. Okay. In fact, this we will show to be constituting as to what is called as the internal inductance of a given transmission line and in this case it is actually mu by 8 pi. The second term will be present okay, more or less always except you know uh, in at very very high frequencies, but this term will be present because the region between the conductors will always enclose a current I. If I remove the outer conductor then this term will not be present, but if I include the outer conductor this term would always be present. This term can actually be considered to be negligible when you consider the thickness C minus B to be approximately 0. So, in other words if I consider the outer conductor thickness to be 0 then this term can be eliminated. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to talk to you about the inductance calculation. Uh, with this we will stop with magnetic electric field calculations we have performed, magnetic field calculations, capacitance and inductance we have looked at and we have looked at a few transmission line structures for which we have calculated capacitance and inductances. Thank you very much.